You're welcome to take your seats. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you right now that there's something so amazing about recognizing who you are, Jesus. Not only who you are, but also who you are in our lives. And so I want to pray that even as we come to your word today, that we'll not just hear what a man has to say, but that we'll hear what you are saying, Holy Spirit. Come and speak to us, minister to us in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your grace, Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, I don't know about you, who of you enjoyed last week? We looked at the supremacy of Christ. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Christ is not only um, more than enough. For us to know that he's more than enough, we need to know that he is supreme. And so today I would like to start off with our second session. And our second session is called the fact that we are, if Christ is going to be more than enough, the way he's more than enough is from the inside out. From the inside out. Christ is more than enough, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And so um, I've, I've got these, these two Coke cans right here. And so I don't know about you, but one of the Coke cans are empty and the other one is full, right? So if you look at the full one, I'm able to literally stand on the full one. It can hold me. Whoa. Did you see that? I can stand on a full Coke can. And I don't know where you're watching from or right here in the, in the building. I can stand on a full Coke can. Why can I stand on it? The reason why I can stand on it is it's filled. It's filled. <laughs> this one's empty. And when the pressures of life come, I'm here to say the pressures are guaranteed. Challenges, difficulties, pressures, impossibilities are guaranteed. And when the pressures of life come... I can literally, I don't even have to stand on it. I can just squeeze it with my own hands. This is what the pressures of life do to you when you're not filled. The problem with most people is they're focusing so much on the outside. They're focusing on what people think. They're focusing on what they wear. They're focusing on the, the, to some, some of the circumstances that they're facing. And the more we focus on the outside and the less we have on the inside, the more life. The pressures of life and the issues of life can squeeze us and destroy us. I want to ask you today, will you live from the inside out? Not from the outside in, will you live from the inside out? And so one of the greatest revelations I believe in the scriptures, one of the greatest revelations is this. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says the following. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You want the hope of glory, the hope of, 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 of having security for the future, the hope of experiencing the goodness of God, the hope of having the presence of God, the glory of God. You need to understand this mystery. Christ in you is the hope of glory. I'm amazed at how many people miss out on this awesome reality. Elizabeth Elliot said the following. She said, the secret is Christ in me. Not me in different set of circumstances. Listen to this. The secret is Christ in me, not me in a lot of circumstances. And so many people focus on all the circumstances. They think, let me just get myself into another circumstance. Let me just get myself into another area of life. Let me just get myself into another way. Maybe I must just change cities. Maybe I must change jobs. Maybe I must change a marriage partner. Maybe I must change church. Now, friends, I'm here to say to you, you need to change who you're relying on, who's on the inside of you. That's what you need to be focusing on. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He says this. He says, watch this. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Watch this, friends. Paul's writing this. He's saying, I am finding my life in Christ. Not my old life, not my physical life. I have new life in Christ. And this life that I live in Christ, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So I'm not living by my faith. I'm living by His faith. What makes that life possible? The, what makes it possible is His death and His resurrection. What makes it possible is His love for me. Now, if you want to know that Jesus is more than enough, 
And if you want to experience a life that you live from the inside out, you need to understand this. Settle this today. Christ loves you. He loves you so much that He's got you. Amen? And so I, I've been looking at this and I thought, thought, to, thought to myself, people that are far from God, it must be so hard for them in this time because who do they have to hold on to? What kind of faith do they have? Because we need to live this life by faith, especially in, in a turbulent time as, as the world is facing right now. We need to have faith. Now here's the question I've got to ask us today. Is I'm asking us, do you find your hope and your life in Christ? Are you living by the faith of Christ? See, I believe that Christ in me starts with me in Christ. Now, I've always wrestled with this reality. But Christ in me is only possible if I am in Christ. If I am not in Christ, I cannot experience Christ in me. Hello? Christ in me comes from me being in Christ. Let me explain it to you like this. The best way I can explain it is this is if this jar had to represent Christ, and you would say to me, yeah, Mark, I want to have Christ in me. Then I'm like, yes, I want to have Christ in me. I want to have Christ in me. Christ in me by His Spirit, because that's how Christ is in us, by His Spirit, right? Christ in me by His Spirit. But I'm here to say to you, friends, that God has got more for us. It's not just Christ in me. It's me in Christ. Watch this. Now I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me. You cannot separate being in Christ from Christ being in you. You can't just say, no, 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 I just have a little bit of Jesus, but I'm going to have my own life. No, we find our life in Him. We find our sufficiency, our hope, our future in Him. And it's when He is in us and we are in Him that He is more than enough for us. Come on, can you give Him praise for that? Isn't that powerful? And if you've been far from God, I want to ask you, today is your day to accept the free gift of salvation and find yourself in Christ. Because when you find yourself in Christ, guess what happens? You'll find Christ in you. And then you have the hope of glory. Then you can face the trials of this time. Then you don't have to be literally destroyed by the circumstances of life, but you can actually be sustained by the, by the life of Christ. Look at me. <laughs> That's the best part of the sermon. I almost fell. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Colossians 2 verse 6 to 7 says the following. It says, So then, just as you received Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him. Watch this. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. So that's why I have the jar here. I believe that God wants us in this time not to literally hold back, but God actually wants us to step into overflow. I believe this is the season of the overflow. This is the season of Jesus not only being enough, but being more than enough. And he's saying, Paul's writing to the church in Colossae, he says to them, family, believers, children of God, listen to this. As you receive Christ, now live in Him. This is how it looks when you, when you are... When you are Living your life in Him. It looks like this. You built up in Him. You are strengthened in His faith. Watch this. And you overflow with thanksgiving. It, it reminds me of that Psalm 46. Psalm 46 verse 4 says this. It says, There is a river whose streams may glad the city of our God. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of our God. I said, Lord, in this time where people are facing sadness, where people are facing depression, I believe we need some gladness, and we're going to talk about that next week, but we need the river of God to flow into every life of a believer, and it needs to not only flow in our lives, but it needs to flow from our lives. John 7, Jesus says, he says, come to me if you are thirsty, and then rivers of living water will flow from within your innermost being. Rivers flow from within us when we find ourselves in him. When we find ourselves in him. I believe that this is a time for overflowing. Can you say overflow? Right there we are. Can you say it again? Overflow. And maybe you could just pray right now, just silently just pray, Lord, I want to live in the overflow. I want the streams of the living water, the life of God, the Spirit of God, Christ in me, the hope of glory to overflow in my life. Verse 8 of Colossians 2 says, See to it that no one takes you captive 
through hollow and deceptive philosophy. Well, there's a lot of that going around. A lot of hollow, 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 deceptive philosophy going around. Hello, lots of that. It says, which depend on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces. Watch this. This, this the hollow philosophy depends on human tradition and elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than Christ. So the question is, who do we depend on? What do we depend on? Do we depend on what the world says or do we depend on the truth of Christ? It says this in verse 9 and 10. It says, for in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you've been brought to fullness. Can you say fullness? So in Christ... In Christ, you and I have been brought to fullness. We've been brought to fullness in Christ. Watch this. It says this. It says, He is the head of every power and authority. So He's the highest authority. We looked at that last week. And watch this now. Then He says this. He says, In Christ, all the fullness of God dwells. So when you and I are in Christ, we are in the fullness of God. We learned that last week. And so I found myself just really over the last few months having moments of extreme Concern, extreme negativity. I know you guys have been just so amazing, never negative, always feeling positive. I found myself, honestly, I felt myself at times depressed. At times, I mean, I remember feeling so despondent and negative. I even had thoughts of giving up. I don't know if you've ever had that, but I've had thoughts of giving up. Maybe I'm just, oh, it's all right, I'm just going to leave this. It's, I'm, it's just too hard. I'm just going to give up. Okay, I know no one, I know you don't know what that feels like, but, but I'll tell you, just you, then at least you can say you know someone. <laughs> you know someone that does that. And I remember um, actually feeling a little bit depressed. And so the first thing I did was I thought what I should do is I should just find out what's, can, what's happening in the world. Maybe I must go just read a little bit about what's happening in the world so that I can just get a bit of an idea of what the future holds, you know. So let's look at News 24 and just what are they saying and then read a little bit about, just went on some social media links and some blogs and thought, what are some of the people saying? And when I read that, I felt even more depressed and I felt even more despondent and I became even more negative because I was filling my head with hollow Deceptive philosophies. Hello? There's too much of that going around right now. And Jesus Christ cannot be more than enough for you if you're filling your life with hollow and deceptive philosophy. He cannot be more than enough for you if you're filling your life with the opinions of men. He cannot be more than enough for you if you're filling your life with what do the circumstances hold rather than what is the truth of Christ in me. What is the truth of the security of Christ in me? Who am I building my life on? And, and I was ready. I was ready to pack it up. And I, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, Mark, why don't you meditate on truth rather than meditate on opinions or on lies? And I remember taking my Bible, literally just taking my Bible and saying, Lord, I just actually would like to read some scriptures out loud. I just had to read some scriptures out loud. I just needed to go to Psalm 27 and read some scriptures out loud. I needed to go to Ephesians chapter 3, which says I'm rooted and grounded in love. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, if, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8. I just had to go and read some scriptures out loud. And as I read the scriptures out loud and I meditated on the truth and I reminded myself, Christ in me is the hope of glory. The greatness is in me. I don't have to face this on my own. I don't have to face it in my own strength. I need to open myself up to the truth. And you know what I love doing? I love finding worship songs that is scripture so I found worship songs worship songs I'm listening to the Psalms I'm, I'm finding people that are that are singing scripture and as they were singing scripture I would meditate it and then I would meditate on Psalm 16 that says oh surely goodness and uh, no so that's that's uh, Psalm 23 I'll meditate on Psalm 23 then Psalm 16 would speak about uh, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places surely I have a good inheritance in the Lord and then I would meditate on Psalm 34 that, that, that says that uh, those who look to you are radiant then I'll, I'll, I'll meditate then I'll, I'm, I'm literally I'm just meditating on the scriptures 
It changes everything. When you're not focusing on what's outside of you, but you focus on the truth inside of you. Because what's inside of you sets the tone for everything around you. You want to tell me what your life is like? I'll tell you, your life is a product of your belief system. What you believe deep inside of you, you will live. People don't have a sin problem. They have a belief problem. So verse 11 of Colossians 2 says, In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Verse 12, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Now you might say, but Mark, why are you talking about baptism and why are you talking about shaking off the flesh? Aren't we talking about Christ being in us? This is so important that many people forgot their water baptism. They forgot what happened at their baptism. They forgot what they declared at their baptism. Sometimes if you if you married, those of you who don't know, but if you married, sometimes it's good to remember your wedding day. Because you know at your wedding day there was something that happened there, very special. You, you exchanged vows, and you had a moment of real love, and you, you really, you felt, man, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person. There was hope, there was a sense of faith, there was a sense of commitment, there was, a, there was a, a, a declaration of what you believed in your heart. That's what happened at your wedding day. So if you're not yet married, don't worry, it's going to happen. But what I, what, I wanted, what I wanted to say was, and if you were married, it's good, no problem. But what I wanted to say was this, is, is I realized that baptism is like that. Baptism is an outward showing of an inward reality. Baptism is an outward declaration that says, this is me. I used to be dead. I used to live a life. I used to live a dead life. I used to live an old life. I used to live a temporary life. But I died to that person. And I rose to a new life in Christ. I'm no longer that person. I'm no longer that person of fear. I'm no longer that person of, of, of literally gossip. And that, even that, that, that person of despair. I'm no longer that person that's just filled with myself. I'm actually that person that's now filled with Christ. I rose to a new life in Christ. And he talks about circumcision. Circumcision is very powerful. Because in the Old Testament, they used to get circumcised as a sign of a covenant, as a sign of the promise. And so what they did is, this circumcision was a prophetic picture that would actually say, literally, if you are connected to Christ, you get circumcised to show, or for them it was when you were connected to God, you get circumcised as a sign that actually you belong to God. But in the New Testament, we, our circumcision is not a physical one, it's a circumcision of the heart, which means that my heart Gets, the flesh gets cut off. The circumcision is the flesh gets cut off. I don't trust in my own strength anymore. I don't trust in my own flesh anymore. I trust in my God. I trust in the one that never leaves me nor forsakes me. I trust in the one that's always there for me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I have. I, ha I don't have to trust in myself. I have a new life. I don't trust in flesh. I trust in Christ. That's what it's about. And so if you've not yet been water baptized, I want to ask you to get baptized today. Because water baptism speaks of my old life is gone, my new life has come. Romans chapter 6. If you're far from God, today is your day to accept the free gift of salvation. So we need to understand that true life, true life for us doesn't flow from the outside in, but true life flows from the inside out. That's why when Christ comes, the Bible says he comes and literally he becomes one with us and we live his life out. So religion, religion focuses on outside in. Religion says, do this, talk like that, dress like this, go to these meetings, do all these things, then you look good. Religion's all about getting you to conform. Moral conformity. Just do the right things. That's what religion's about. That's outside in. Friends, you cannot change the outside in. Jesus said this. He said, he said it's not, he, he, literally, he says, he says, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of the mouth. Why? Because he said this. He says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That means that what's in you will become who you are. That's actually who you are. 
So religion is not about from the outside in. Oh, that religion focuses on the outside in. Christianity is about living from the inside out. If you want to overcome sin, you're not going to overcome sin from the outside in. You're going to overcome sin by faith from the inside out. Living the Christ life, living it out. That's why it says in Philippians 2, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. When you believe right, like I said, you'll live right. See, Christ is more than enough. <laughs> Why? Because he sustains us from the inside out. He's in the unseen realm. Remember what happened with Jacob. Oh, sorry, it was Isaac in, in Genesis 26. Isaac in Genesis 26. He, he, he sowed in a land of famine. Remember that? We are in famine at the moment. And what, what he did was he didn't look at the scene. He looked at the unseen. Why? Because he drew, there was a well that he dug, he opened up some wells and he drew water from the unseen where the whole nation, everyone around him, they were focusing on the circumstances. They were focusing in today's world, what is the stock market? What's the house prices? What, 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 are, what are the interest rates? Oh, what's happening around us? Oh, let's look at the rain. Let's look at the circumstances. That's where our provision comes from. <laughs> not, not, not with Isaac. His provision came from a well. He drew life from the unseen. Now more than ever, believers should actually thrive more than ever. Believers should do better now more than ever. You know why? Because we don't have any other hope. We can't get any... The, the scene, it's famine out there. But we have an unseen <laughs> source. We have an unseen source. We can draw, we can draw from Christ, the well that never runs dry. We can draw from Christ. See, if your spirit is strong, your life is strong. If your spirit is weak, your life is weak. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Watch this. The reason why that is powerful is because Christ overcame the world. Christ is victorious. So when I put my hope in Christ, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So you must remember what's in us is what determines what happens around us. And so when you and I are filled with truth, we live truth. But when we're filled with lies, when we're filled with hollowness, with emptiness, we are limited. Watch this. I want to show you something. Can I show you something today? Look at this. I'm sure many of you have seen this illustration I don't have a balloon with water in, but I only have a balloon that does not have water in. And if the, the fires of life come, when you have a balloon with no water in, you're going to have an explosion. Your life's going to literally become a mess. It's amazing how when we are empty, when we're not filled with Christ, how disaster comes, how our lives fall apart. I want to ask you, are you filled with the peace of Christ? Because the Bible says the peace of Christ can guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. It's the peace of Christ. It's when he rules in our hearts like an umpire. When the peace of Christ rules, no matter what happens around us, we can have Christ inside of us. We can have the sustaining power of Christ inside of us, holding us and filling us. You know what I've learned? I've learned the way I know what's inside of me is I need to listen to the words that come out of my mouth. Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. He said, literally, your mouth, what your words reveal what's in your heart. If you are speaking negative, that's probably because there's negativity in your heart. When you are speaking fear, there's probably fear in your heart. When you are speaking lies, when you're speaking the, 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 the hearsay conspiracy theories, you know what happens? You're speaking things because they're living inside of you. When you're speaking defeat, when you're speaking a, a sense of despair, it's probably because that's inside of you. Now, just because it's in there and just because you said it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. All you and I need to do is we need to address, we need to address the reality inside of us. We need to come back to the Word of God and put the truth in there. When we put the truth back in, everything changes. Now, I'm going to show you a video clip right now, and this video clip really looks at this young man, and it's an amazing, I know it's an old video, most of you have seen it, but this, it's about this young man that thought he could do about 30 yards, and while he was blindfolded, he actually found out that there was more in him than what he thought. And if you, if you only heard this, 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 this week, if you only heard this one thing, is that Christ in you is far greater than you could ever imagine. 
Christ in you can empower you to go beyond where you ever thought you could. Christ in you could, could empower you to be who God has called you to be. Why? Because He is the hope of glory. He is the Lord of glory. And He's the King of kings. And He will empower you to go beyond your limitations. Let's quickly watch this video clip together. So, Coach, how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a loss, Brock? Well, not if I know we could beat them. Come here, Brock. You too, Jeremy. What, am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. The 50? I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. Okay. You going to give me your best? I'm going to give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. <laughs> get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right. Let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground, just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. Show me good effort. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on, keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know he's heavy. I'm bad out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Keep going. Burn. And let it burn. My arms are burning. It's all hard. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Come on. Keep going. You promised me your best. You're back. Don't stop. Keep going. Too hard. It's not too hard. You keep going. Come on, Brock. Give me more. Give me more. Keep going. 20 more steps. 20 more. Keep going, Brock. Give me your back. Don't quit. No. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Brock Kelly, you don't quit. Keep going. Keep going. Go, Brock Kelly. You don't quit on me. No, you keep going, you keep going, go Brock, 10 more steps, 10 more, 10 more, 10 more, keep going, don't quit, give me your heart, you can, you can, 5 more, 5 more, come on Brock, come on, don't quit, don't quit, come on Brock, 2 more, 1 more, Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. Wow. It really blessed me. Isn't that powerful? You're in the end zone. And I believe that you and I can, we can embrace so much more. We can carry so much more. And I, I'm, I'm wanting to talk to to the parents in this, in, in, in this celebration. I want to talk to, to the students in the celebration that you feel like you're carrying stuff and you're just saying, I just do not have it. I just do not have the strength. I just can't do this anymore. I feel like some people, even listening to my voice right now, you've been wanting to quit. You've been wanting to quit on life. I feel like there's some people actually wanting to commit suicide this very week. You said, actually, I'm going to end my life. I just can't anymore. I just don't have it. I just, I just do not have enough. There's not enough of me. I'm here to say to you that Christ in you is more than enough. You're going to be able to carry the weight that, 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 that you're carrying right now. He's going to empower you. Because it's not about what happens on the outside. It's about what happens on the inside. What you believe is what you live. Address your belief system in the season. Understand that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that says that he's given us all things, everything we need for life and for godliness. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness because he called us by his own glory 
And He called us by His goodness. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness because He's called us for His glory and for, his, for goodness. Let's embrace this amazing life of Christ that He's given us. If you're far from God this, this day, I want to say this, is that even there where you are, maybe if you're watching online, please type F-A-R. We would like to pray with you. We'd like to connect with you. If you're far from God and you want to come back to Jesus today, you want to be back in Christ and you want Christ in you, you want to embrace the hope of glory, today is your day of salvation. But if you've been close to God and you know that God's put so much in you, there's, 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 there's gifting in you, there's, there's anointing in you, there's the presence and the power of God in you. It's no longer you that live, it's Christ that lives in you. It's, you're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. You are in Christ and Christ is in you. If that's your reality, could you today recognize that you've got the God of the universe empowering your life in you? You have become one with Christ. Could you live from that place? Could you live from that place of Christ being more than enough for you because Christ is more than enough in you? Could you live from that place today? And I want to pray this over you. Father, I want to pray firstly any person that's far from you, that today will be their day where they turn their back on sin, they put, turn their back on the lies of the enemy, and they'll turn their face to you.